good afternoon from Not My Garden. We're in Duisburg and I'm joined by my daughter Esther who came for this occasion especially from Rotterdam where she's living now. Esther, where are we? We are at Het Olderas, which is a museum garden and this weekend they're organizing a fruit festival. Fruit exhibition, sort of. And uh, going to fruit exhibitions in the fall is a bit of a family tradition. We've been doing it since the children were very little. Um, how many have you been to, do you think? I'd say a solid 10 at least, maybe 15. I think that's maybe exaggerated, but it's definitely a fun tradition for us. But there are also, you know, just apart from having a good full outing, there are other reasons to do things like that because when you want to find good varieties for your garden it can be very hard to taste them even see them before you buy the trees and taste is obviously very important uh, the offer on in supermarkets is very limited we, we also did a fruit tasting from all the apples from the supermarket but it's like maybe a dozen and as you can see here there are tens, maybe, I would say over a hundred varieties on display here. They definitely have more varieties than that in the garden. And even this is just a fraction of the fruit varieties that exist in the world. So especially if you're looking for a bit more rare heirloom varieties, and there are very good reasons for planting those in your garden, um, fruit exhibitions like this are a great opportunity to see them and often even taste them. So we have we started by choosing our favorites uh, based on looks, because unfortunately you cannot you cannot taste all the varieties that are uh, on display, but there are quite a few that you can. And uh, my husband chose this one, the Wurzleuken apple, which is a real beauty. And in this case, it was more than the looks. It's not one of the varieties that you can taste, but I asked and they were so kind and they took one of the apples from the display and they let, let us taste it and it was really delicious. So this is one that we're actually considering for our garden. And then Esther chose the favorite based on looks. Which one was it? I did. It's over there. I don't remember right now. So my favorite based on looks is definitely this one. It is the Neuenberger Rosenapfel, which has very nice like soft and matte colors and it's a little stripy. So it's really pretty, but we got the chance to taste that one as well. And unfortunately that wasn't as much of a success as the other one. It's still quite nice, but definitely not one of my favorite varieties based on taste, I would say. So last year I was studying in Canada, in Ontario, and I did do a little bit of a supermarket apple tasting, but unfortunately I didn't have the same access to different varieties as we do here. Um, so we found the Renette du Canada here, which is presumably a Canadian variety. We tried that as well. Um, I think there's actually a reaction video of it. It is incredibly sour. But apples also have different purposes and I presume that maybe that one is good for baking and in that case it does say uh, uh, like dessert and, and cooking apple so maybe it's good for baking or cooking with because the sour varieties are often better than the like one tone sweet varieties for that.
Esther is always my tasting buddy because she can she can taste as many apples as I can. Absolutely. Lot of, <laughs> she can keep up because a lot of people will taste a few and then they're sort of uh, not full but like overwhelmed maybe. I don't Saturated. Know. I guess. <laughs> the taste buds start. Taste buds get overwhelmed. But we love to take this opportunity when you can taste different varieties. I think there are at least 20 that you can taste here. So we didn't do the ones that we know, because there are some like well-known uh, heirlooms or even heirlooms that we have in our garden. But we tried pretty much every other one. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Must have been 20 at least that we've tried so far. Feels like. Yeah. <laughs> Esther, was, uh, Esther was surprised that so few people are taking, uh, taking what do you call it? Taking part in this? taking this opportunity yeah because it's one of my favorite parts is just trying to the different yeah trying all the different apple varieties and like if you just if you're just used to supermarket apples they can be they're sort of similar to each other they're all crispy mostly sweet and the variety in heirloom apples is somewhat bigger than that so we tasted a lot and i think one of the apart from the one that remco liked the gewurz like apple apple uh, it's a strange mix of German and, and Dutch to me. Um, I think the nicest, would you agree, that was Ingrid Marie? Ingrid that one was really nice, but it was and one we tasted at the start, so I think it's, it's more also that distinct we were not in our so memories. No, but I've tasted this one before, and it's also a variety that I recommend to people. It's not only very beautiful, but it is honestly also very good tasting, and it's one of the I would say most aromatic apples and it's a good alternative for people who like Cox's orange pippin which um, many people think is the best tasting heirloom variety but unfortunately that one is really difficult to grow organically and Ingrid Marie has um, Cox's orange pippin as one of the uh, ancestors so it has some of that um, some of that aromatic taste but it's much easier to grow organically we're now in the other room where there is an exhibition of pear varieties. There are not nearly as many as apples. Now you're filming the, the art exhibition of different fruits, which is also very nice. I'm kind of jealous of some of the, the ones on, uh, that are exhibited here. The, the glass ones are really pretty. But there are also pears that you can actually eat here. But like I said, not as many as um, as there are apples, and unfortunately, none were available for tasting. Esther, what's your favorite pear? I'm not the biggest fan of pears. I have to admit, I like apples much more. But I think I can get behind the classic Conference pear, um, especially if it's still a little crispy and not super soft and ripe. Uh, fortunately, that's the variety that we have in our garden, and it is a huge tree, so. I was very glad when we, we discovered the tree was already in the garden when we got the garden and I talked about it in one of my previous videos but we were very happy when we discovered what variety actually was because it is the favorite of both of my children. <laughs> I'm not as narrow-minded as Esther and Sebastian. <laughs> I like some other varieties too and there are also obviously not just dessert pears but there are also pears for cooking and uh, the Dutch are very fond of that, so there are several varieties here that are especially well suited to poaching. So like apples, pear are very varied, both in taste, maybe not as much as apples, but, but also in um, the way they look. And I want to show you a couple of uh, examples here from the huge ones like Pons pear, which can weigh over a pound. And on the other, other side of the spectrum is a funny variety <laughs> over here. Can you see how tiny it is compared to my hand? And it also has a very funny name. Sveinenkötl pear is something like wild boar turch <laughs> pears. And based on the looks, I really like this one, which is called swan neck pear. Unfortunately, we are not able to taste that one. Well, um, as a break from apple tasting, we're going to taste their apple tart now. I presume it's baked with uh, different varieties from the orchard, so I'm really looking forward to tasting that. I see you wanted the one without cream. Yes, please. And I want a little cream. 
This is, I think, my second favorite part of fruit <laughs> festivals. Second only to the apple tasting. Apple tasting and then apple, apple yes. tart tasting. Exactly. It's good. It's like what I hate about like tarts and pies and is when the apples are just sweet because I think they're sweet apples are really not good for baking. And then it ends up cloying. And those are a little tart. Really nice. It is. So maybe a bit overkill on the other things. The almond flakes and the raisins. Mm -hmm. But a good ratio of apple to mm, to pie dough. Okay, being a gardening channel, I don't get to do holes very often. I did a few plant holes, but not very often. But I thought it would be fun to do a little whole segment of what we got here. Um, apart from some of the apples, you can also get um, jams or preserves that are made with the fruit from the orchard. What did we get? We got this one, which is plum, and that one, which is peach. And neither of them contain any added sugar, so it's all natural and only the sugars from the fruits. So we're looking forward to tasting those. I'm also quite curious about how they like the peach growing because we're not very successful at that. So I might have to ask what varieties they grow. And we also got this, which is... <laughs> we got some juice. This one is, I think, apple and pear. And that one is just apple, which they make with all the leftover apples that they have here. So it's a mix, mix of all of the, the varieties. And Esther promised to make a um, full uh, themed cocktail for us tonight with the, with the juices from the orchard. Yes. Maybe some cinnamon, some other yeah. spices. No, what you can see. Yeah. And if you're, if you're curious about Esther's uh, cocktail making uh, uh, abilities, uh, there is a video where we made a liqueur with the um, elderflower Elder and then Esther made a cocktail with it. So I might link to that. That one was more summery though. <laughs> it was very fun. I, yeah, I got pretty tipsy during <laughs> filming that one. Um, and you can see it's unfiltered juice. So those are, those are the best. Not like the supermarket juice, which is made from concentrate. Lastly, we got some apples. This one, which is called um, winter, white winter calville, or what is it in French? Calville Blanc d'hiver. And it's supposed to be the best ever apple for the classic um, apple dessert that's made in France, Tarte au temps. I have actually made that once with um, this particular apple when I was writing an article about the best varieties of apples for particular dishes. But I'm looking forward to doing that again. I also very much like the way this apple looks. And now we got this one, which we now can't really remember what it was called. It was something with Rome. I think it's called Rome Beauty. Okay. I think I'm pretty sure. It's definitely very pretty. And we tasted that one during the tasting. We liked it quite well. Yeah, it was quite nice. Yeah. So we got, um, not all the apples were, on, uh, were, were for sale. So we got the, the, the fa one, our favorites. And this one Esther got, you can explain. Well, Lucy just got this one because it's really bright and red and pretty. To be honest, I'm not even sure I remember which variety. I do this remember. Is. Okay, <laughs> as we grew it, right? You said. Yeah, we used to have it in our previous garden. It's called uh, uh, Red Jonathan or uh, Rode Jonathan. And Esther said that she wanted to reenact um, <coughs> Snow White. Yes. So that's um, that's. It uh, seems like an appropriate <laughs> apple for that. It looks like it could be a poison apple, hypothetically. <laughs> We'll yeah. find out if it is. <laughs> you want to reenact it on camera? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll save that for later. So that was our, um, I feel like, quite um, modest haul. I think <laughs> so. This is very reasonable. <laughs> very reasonable. It all fits in one picnic basket. Um, and we're going to take a walk through the orchard. Most of the apples are um, off the trees or are, have been harvested, but there are still some uh, with apples on them. They also sell here trees and you can order if there is a particular variety that you want you can get them to graft it for you so that's uh, that's also uh, a great service and there are other orchards or um what is it called orchards like brockdale in england which also offer this service so that's something to keep in mind if you're uh, on the lookout for a particular heirloom variety so i think that was um, that was it for today thanks for vlogging with me esther <laughs> it's so much more fun to do it with somebody Thanks for um, having me. <laughs> I hope we can do this next year again. That uh, 
that by then we're done with the pandemic and we can okay. fingers crossed <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. It was a bit different from my other videos. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have other fruit exhibitions in your country that you go to. And I'm also always very much interested in people's favorite apples. So let us all know in the comments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Happy gardening.